Hello and welcome back to PSD Touch Plus. I'm Martin Perhiniak and this is the Shortcut series. Today I'm going to show you an advert, how I designed this advert, and we will learn a little bit about theory for advertisement uh, images and also we will learn about how to manage different color profiles and a couple of useful techniques when you combine images together. So first of all, I would like to tell you the whole concept behind this uh, tutorial and the advert itself. Sometimes it's very useful when you don't know how to um, show something uh, in an advert is to create a mix-up. When you create a juxtaposition of two completely different worlds or uh, different styles and using that difference in the two different styles or different objects in this case to make it interesting and eye-catching. In this case I wanted to uh, come up with an idea for this tutorial and I came up with this concept of an advert where it's an estate agency, the PSD estate agency and it's all about, the advert itself is all about uh, showing like a really posh and rich door in the middle of a very rundown area especially uh, just emphasizing the whole difference with the home sweet home sign and the welcome doormat so all this in an area where you wouldn't expect something like this can create an interesting effect. It might be something that people will have to think about when they look at it, but definitely it, it has an effect. People will start to think about what does this whole thing mean? Maybe some people will understand it immediately, was the whole point of the advert. For some people, they will need to think about it, but it definitely has an effect. And that's a useful thing to use in your own uh, projects when you have to create adverts, maybe for your own projects or for clients, that you can use this type of uh, design element when you create the, the juxtaposition and the uh, difference between two completely different styles. So let me start the, the tutorial itself. That's the whole concept or idea behind this uh, image. But let me show you the two source files. So first of all, we have this graffiti image from PhotoJune and another image which I took in Edinburgh of this nice uh, gate. And I would like to put this gate on the other image. So usually it's very simple. We just need to drag and drop it onto the um, other image. So let's see how that works in this case. I am going to use the move tool and I click and drag the door onto the other image. And as you can see, the colors change completely. So this was the original color of the photo. And this is what we got once we moved it into this new uh, document. So what's the main problem here? It's definitely color management problem. With most of our files, image files, we will have color, color profiles attached to them. Let's just check what's the color profiles in this case. On the left, I am going to check it by going to edit menu and convert to profile. And I can see that the source space of this photo on the left with the graffiti is sRGB. Now let's check the, the other one here on the right. I'm going to edit, convert to profile. And we can see this one is Prophoto RGB. Now, obviously, these are completely different uh, color uh, spaces. So the ICC profile makes sure that these colors are correct in this color space. But what can we do if we want to combine two different color spaces? It's very simple. All you need to do is to convert the profile. So in this case, I can do either on the left or on the right uh, on any of these two images, but I will probably turn this one to sRGB because I'm planning to use this image on the web and sRGB color spaces, it works really well on the internet. So instead of using a Prophoto RGB, which is great for camera raw files, in this case, I'm going to turn it into sRGB. So edit, convert to profile, and I already have the source space and the destination space selected. So I'm, I can click on OK. By the way, here in the advanced options, you can set a lot of other options as well, but I just go back to basic and I'm going to click on OK. Now, you won't see any difference here. 
So let me go back and forth. You won't be able to see this difference. But th what happened now is that if I move the gate onto the other image, we won't have that color issue that we had previously. So that's the very important thing about converting the color profile in these cases when you have different color spaces. Okay, so this is a very important example and it's always good to have the ICC profiles attached but you have to know about how to uh, combine different color spaced images. Okay, I'm going to close this image which was the camera raw file and I am going to keep on working with this one. Before I make any change on this one, I would like to create a, a smart object from this. So I am going to right click and turn it into a smart object, which will keep the size and the original, so this original size, even I uh, make it much smaller and then make it bigger again, I won't lose any quality on the way. And also when I'm going to use free transform, uh, the smart object will help me to always keep the perspective that I set for the image. That's a very important feature of smart objects as well. Now, whether it's better to make a mask before creating the smart object or vice versa, that's a very good question. And usually it's hard to tell uh, because it always comes while you are working. So in this case, it's good to think a bit ahead uh, most of the time. In this case, I know that I'm going to make this gate smaller and I'm going to put it in the background. Let me just show you. So I'm going to make it smaller and I am going to probably uh, put it in perspective, something like this. Now for this, probably it would be better if I create the mask before resizing it because once I have it in perspective it might be a bit more complicated to create the mask for it. Okay so instead of applying this transformation I am going to create the mask on top of this smart object. Now if you create a pixel mask that's better to place inside the smart object while if you create a, a vector mask you can place that outside the smart object because with that you won't lose quality on the mask itself while with the pixel mask whenever you recite something you will lose quality now let me show you this because this is also something that you will need to learn so let's just say I am going to use now the quick selection tool and I'm going to select the gate just let me do a very quick and rough selection but this tool works quite well when we have one image like this stand out from the environment and I create the mask by clicking on the mask icon here now that looks really good so far but what happens if I make this much smaller let's just say really really small like this and it will be the Tom and Jerry door on the wall so something like that size but then I decide to make this bigger okay let's make it bigger we have a smart object so it shouldn't be a problem but look at the edges because we use the pixel mask even though we had a smart object, this pixel mask we created is outside of the smart object, so we will lose quality. So that's a very important uh, thing about smart objects and masking, that now if I press enter, uh, Photoshop will still try to make it as good as possible, the mask, but if I alt click on the mask, on the edges you can see it is really bad. The quality of the mask is really bad. Because the image itself is a smart object, the quality of the image stays fine. And it stays as good as uh, the original image. So we didn't lose any quality on that, but we definitely lost quality on the mask itself. So if you want to use a pixel mask, then it's better to do it inside the smart object, because then inside the smart object, not just the image, but the pixel mask quality will be also good after resizing. So it will maintain the quality, not just for the image, but the pixel mask as well. But what can we do if we want to use the mask outside of a smart object? What we can do also is to create another smart object or create a vector mask. So we can embed the smart object into another smart object, which might make it a bit more complicated. And some cases, especially when we have geometric shapes like this door, it's actually better to create a vector mask. And vector masks are to, uh, to create vector mask is the best to do with the pen tool. 
So let me do this quickly and I am going to show you uh, other tutorials where I'm going to teach you more about the pen tool but for now the most important thing before you start it using it for anything is to set it to pass mode the pen tool and that will be the perfect for a vector mask and now we can start creating uh, the path first of all it won't be a mask at this moment but we will turn it into a mask soon so all I do here is just click all around the door to create the mask wherever I can see straight edges all I need to do is just click 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 now here on the edge you can see it's not accurate so I just go back one step you can undo any steps with the pen tool that's a very useful feature and I'm going to add another income point there and now comes the tricky part with the curved uh, parts of the uh, door here all I need to do is click on the top and drag and create a curve and using my mouse or the uh, tablet uh, I am going to adjust it to the shape of the door with the handles so I'm just dragging it out to the top left and let it go when it's fine now here on the top I need to break this uh, handle on the left because I need to do something which goes down from here immediately so there won't be a, a mirrored uh, version of this curve so there won't be another curve here going that way or the other way I need to break this so I alt click on the same anchor point with the pen tool and uh, that converts that anchor point into a normal point but still keeps the other half of the curve and then I click here click and drag down and I try to adjust the pen tool or the curve itself now it's in place and once again from here I want to draw a straight line so I alt click on this and then I create one point here somewhere and then another one to close my shape so I have my path and with the path selection tool which is the, uh, this one the black arrow with this one I can select it already now with uh, paths and vector masks it's always the best to create your mask with the least amount of anchor points because then it will be easier to adjust them later on so try to use the least amount of anchor points whenever you can and once you have a pass created and selected you can create a vector mask from it so you can go to the layer menu and you can go to vector mask and you can choose uh, reveal all hide all or current path we need the current path in this case because we already prepared this path and the same thing happens as with as with pixel masks so Photoshop creates a mask from this uh, path and now we can work with this and uh, without losing quality and that's the most important thing so if I make this smaller let me just make it smaller and then I make it bigger again because the mask is uh, vector based the edges will be always just as perfect as in the beginning so we will never lose quality on it the image is itself the quality of the image is preserved inside the smart object and the quality of the mask is preserved in the vector mask so that is the most important thing uh, to learn about uh, this technique or about smart objects and masking together and uh, that was the second most important thing in this tutorial after uh, setting up the color profiles correctly and now from this point it's actually quite uh, simple how to do the whole effect probably uh, the most uh, interesting thing here is how to set this right in perspective now the only problem with smart objects is that you can't use um, the vanishing point filter with smart objects so you have to do it with the free transform tool but it's not a big problem because with the free transform tool by holding down command or control on PC we can always turn uh, objects around by clicking on uh, these corner points and uh, as you can see now I turn the image a bit around so this would be similar to the feature called skew but now we can also use the perspective distortion if we hold down still command and control on PC and click on one of the corner points like this because then we can really set perspective in the image so let me just make this a bit smaller I'm holding down alt and shift while dragging it down and that will make it uh, smaller but keep the proportions the same 
So I'm going to set the size of the door to something like this. And I am trying to follow the lines in the image, like these lines here. I followed it with the perspective on the top and also the lines of the um, street. As you can see, I followed. So this should be fine in perspective. But whenever I want to come back and make changes to it, I can always press Command T or Control T for the free transform tool. And I can adjust it further to make it even better. So I didn't lose anything. It's completely non-destructive all the effects I use so, so far. So now the door is in place, okay? But we have a bit too much unnecessary white space here, which just distracts the viewer. If we leave this uh, uh, ceiling here, uh, probably the bottom of a bridge. So I am going to use the crop tool. And if we turn off the option delete crop pixels in CS6, it will be non-destructive. So our crop will be completely non-destructive. And that's exactly what I want in this case. And I try to uh, have my composition um, a bit off center. So I have the door not in the center, but somewhat here on the left. And probably something like this will work fine. Okay, maybe a little bit further crop from the top and then I press enter. But just like with the other options I used in this tutorial, this cropping is also completely non-destructive. So whenever I select the crop tool next time, and let's just say I want to include more from the part here on the left, I can always do that. In this case, I am going to make it again a bit closer to the door, something like that. Okay. So we have the image ready now and we can start adding the other effects. First of all, we have to make this uh, door believable that it's actually in this wall. Um, so we need to make it, uh, give it some depth. To do that, I am going to do a very simple technique. I'm going to command click on the door, actually not the door itself, but the vector mask, command click on the vector mask and create a new layer, put that below the door and pick a color from the door for now. Okay, I will click on the door and then old backspace using the fill with foreground color option. I filled it in with red, uh, the same color as the door. So I am going to deselect this and I'm going to move it a little bit to the left. Okay, so I'm just moving it a little bit to the left, something like that. Then I hold down alt and pressing the left arrow several times will duplicate the layer and at the same time it will also move it one pixel at a time to the left. So that created already a depth for this door and I can combine these layers together by selecting all of them and press command E. Then I can use a hue saturation to make it darker or we can even use levels. Let me just use levels in this case. Command L is the keyboard shortcut for levels or you can find it under image adjustments. And I am going to make the door uh, look darker. Maybe we can use the output levels to do this effect. Something like that looks okay. I click on okay. So this is the depth for the door. You can see it already looks much more believable. So it's right in perspective and now it has a bit of depth. So from this point on, we can just continue working on this banner and the other steps are not that interesting. These were the main techniques I wanted to show, but let me show you the final result once again. So here you can see we have the same setup and I just used another adjustment layer to darken the whole image a bit and then just use these additional elements to make the composition uh, work. So these are the techniques I wanted to show you today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, next time I am going to talk about my own custom keyboard shortcuts. I always tell you about keyboard shortcuts and I already told you that I have some custom keyboard shortcuts, but in the next tutorial I will show you all the custom keyboard shortcuts that I use. It might be useful for you as well. So thanks a lot for your attention today and I hope you will join me next time.